last night, we dealt with the, there are two sentences in Matthew 1.18. We dealt with the first sentence, sentence Greek sentence and English last night. Our subject last night was now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. And we look back at the first 17 verses because the word now is the conjunction day, D-E, and it's a, they're looking back at, at 40 generations of people from Abraham to the birth of Christ. Look at verse 17 of chapter 1 in review. Therefore, all the generations from Abraham to David are 14, from David to de deportation uh, to Babylon, 14, and from the deportation of Babylon to the time of Christ, the birth, 14. That when you multiply, it makes 42, but there's only 40 generations mentioned by name. And we explained that last night. Um, I don't want to go back to it tonight. We explained that, why that's so, and it deals with the curse of Coniah, the deportation to Babylon, as mentioned twice, which is not a generation of people in the sense of messianic uh, geneal genealogy. And the curse of Coniah plays an important role in how Matthew set all that up. Uh, Jeremiah 22, 24 through 30, dealing with the curse of Coniah. And so when the writer, when Matthew opens this up in, in Matthew 1, he says now. He uses the word particle to interject that the birth of Christ has brought all those generations in the book of life. By that, the, the book of life dealing with the coming of Christ and eternal life. Everybody in that ha, 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 has, all of that has been fulfilled. All of those generations from Abraham then we talked about Luke 3, where it goes all the way back to Adam. But now the birth, so the word now is day, and it's um, dealing with now we have the birth of Christ. All of that's fulfilled. You know, that's very interesting. Now, he deals with 40, 40 if you go mathematically, 42 generations. I've explained that. When you go to Luke, you have 75. Now, when you think from Adam to Christ, when you think we don't we don't know where the we don't know the date of Adam, but but way back before time was counted, you know, <clears throat> and I mean I don't know how far that would go back. To tell you the truth, and everybody estimates it. And nobody's got it. I don't think anybody's even close to it, but. He, 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 he goes from Adam, the ge now that we're talking about the, the, the genealogy of Christ, he, Luke 3 goes from Adam, to the first Adam to the last Adam to Jesus Christ, and there's only 75 generations there. Now, what will help us in a lot of that in Luke's account is the people lived a long time before the, in the antediluvian period, and so we've got, we don't even know how that's calculated, to tell you the truth. I mean, everybody's got a guess, and that's all it is. But is it a long time? Well, anyhow, it just, I mean, when we think about history, I mean, go, 75 generations don't seem like a long, like many generations, does it? I mean, just think of your family. I mean, just when they came over here from somewhere and settled down and where we are today with that. I mean, 75 generations don't seem like a lot. And so when you study the genealogy, you find an interesting principle in the word of God that when believers got into reversionism, God didn't count their time. And so there are a lot of gaps in time in the genealogy, especially of Matthew. There's a lot of gaps of time. You can, you can show them all, but when they were in discipline, he didn't count their time. That was, that was, that's like, I don't know, maybe prison time or something. I don't know. You know, I don't know how you count all that, but it's not real time. Uh, in the sense of production. So um, when they were out of the land business, 
So, but, but anyhow, it's just, it's kind of interesting. Tonight we come to the subject matter of uh, the second sentence, second sentence, Greek sentence and English. Uh, when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And we're going to take a look at that in the Greek. Remember, uh, last night I said that the Matthew, gene the Matthew genealogy is the birth story of Christ from the side of Joseph. And Luke's account is, of the birth story is from the side, the family side of Mary. We know that because Matthew goes from David through Solomon to Joseph. And on the Luke side, if you study the genealogy, you would say it goes from Luke to Nathan to Mary. But anyhow, all of that. Now, after a word of prayer, what I want to do is I want to show you something unique in the Greek language. And that what, what, what I refer around here to is Greek markers. We have a wonderful system of Greek markers with the word day. And I put them on your paper and we're going to say it because Matthew is going to use it as an outline based on what he said in, 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 in the first sentence. Now, catch this now. Because these days are all this important. He said, now, use the word day. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ, watch this, was as follows. <clears throat> that adverb means in the following manner, in the following manner. And so you, what you got in verse 1 all the way through verse 25 are six days by that D-E, day, six conjunctions. Now, you can't see them in the English because they, they change their identity in English but not in Greek, okay? So, thank you. If it's important why you guys take it in another room, you know, if you got your phone on for some specific reason. Well, let's have a word of prayer, and, and I'll get into this part of it, and then we'll study tonight's lesson before they came together. This is a really important, this second sentence how he lays it out, how he lays it out. Okay, let's have a word of prayer. I give you a moment of silence as a believer priest and dwelt by the Holy Spirit. Make confession of sin if necessary. It would be necessary. Can't study the Bible, a spiritual book for spiritual people, for spiritual living. Can't study carnality, nor can you live it. Can't learn it, nor live it. Uh, the way you deal with carnality is confession of sin. First John 1 John 1.9, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us. That work of Christ on the cross to the confession of sin works to restore us to fellowship, not to salvation. To fellowship, we're already saved. And this is why it's important for Bible study so the Holy Spirit can teach us so that he can recall what we have learned to the practical part of our life of living. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful tonight for these have come our way, both by automobile and by internet to study with us the Word of God. And when we study it, when we hear it and believe it, it becomes alive in our, our life. Of Hebrews 4.12, the Word of God is alive, shut sharper, powerful, and sharper than a two-edged sword, and piercing to the very innermost being of our being so that it becomes a critic of the thoughts and intentions of our heart. We pray for that. That is a good thing, not a bad thing. And I pray the Holy Spirit would minister tonight the second lesson in our series out of Matthew 1, 18 through 25, on the uniqueness of of the historical birth of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. For we've made our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So what I did for you, I put on the top of your paper in my introduction, <coughs> taking a look at the six days, D-E, those are conjunctions, 
the first one that is used in verse 18 fills a gap between verses 117 and the second sentences, sentence of, of verse 18 to the verse 25. And then, listen, on through the book of Matthew. Because what Matthew is going to do is to tell you that the birth of Christ is a historical event that's going to change the world. In fact, when Matthew closes his book in the 28th chapter, he's going to tell us to go out to the world of nations with the message of Christ, the coming of Christ, and that he's coming again. So it's a, it's a little powerful book, and the book is, begin, is set up here. Now, the birth of Christ was as follows, and it goes through the book. This is chapter 1. <laughs> We're going through 28. This is chapter 1 of the unfolding of the birth of Christ according to the book of Matthew. And it's kind of interesting, and that's, that first day is used that way. It picks up the genealogy, brings it into fulfillment, and then puts Christ into his earthly ministry to the cross, through the burial, through the resurrection, 40 days of ascensions, uh, of post-resurrection appearances, and then the ascension, and then the great declarations that are given to us out of the book of Matthew to go, therefore, into all the world and convert nations to Christ. I mean, just think about that. Converting nations to Christ. I mean, every generation is charged. Every generation is of, of the new covenant. Every generation of new covenant is charged with winning people to Christ, right? Bringing the message of the gospel is the power of God to save those who believe. And we're to carry it to the uttermost parts of the earth. But you know what? What is interesting in the book of Luke or in the book of Acts, when Luke describes it, he, he describes it a little different. You see, when Luke runs his genealogy of Christ, he's going to do the same thing and run it. He's going to write two volumes on it. Matthew wrote one volume on it. Luke writes two. When, he, when Luke introduces his genealogy, which is Luke 1, 2, and 3, when he goes to his book, he's going to go to the same place Matthew went, and he's going to write a second volume, which is the church of Jesus Christ responsible to, to the world in the book of Acts. So he... he, he under the influence of Paul, apparently, uh, writes a second volume, which is important to you and I, that transitional period. Well, here we are. Uh, let's take a look at our text uh, and go down through 18 through 21 with it. Uh, we have a day in verse 1. In verse 19, it is the word Anne in the English. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man, not wanting to disgrace her, and Joseph, that word and, um, I, I think in the King James, they said then. And in verse 19, okay. Um, the word and uh, actually would be, uh, it's day, and you could translate it and, or you could translate it now, like they did in verse 18. Huh? No, that's a day. That's D-E. That's not, that's not a chi. But, but D-E can be translated a lot of different ways, as we'll see. In verse, in verse 20, look at verse 20, it, the word but. See the word but? Is your, does your Bible open in verse, with but? See, that's the word day. In verse 21, you have the word and. That's the word day. D-E. Verse 22 and 23 go together. Notice verse 22. It says now. It says now. Verse 24. In verse 24, which goes with 25, verse 24 opens with and, but it's the word day. Then. 
That's a day. Verse 20, no, verse 24. 24 is the word in my Bible said, and your Bible probably said then. What you could do with all of these, which the writer started with, the, I guess the reason they didn't was they wanted the first now to, to fulfill uh, verses 1 through 17, the genealogy with the birth of Christ. Now the birth of Christ. See, we had all of these generations. Now we have the birth of Christ. But truthfully, you could put now in every spot. By the way he introduced it to us. But you see, what he's done, what he, what he did is he used day, a conjunction, which is a link. It's a, it's a trailer hitch, whether it's day or Kai or whatever. It's a trailer hitch. And so verses, here's what he's done. Verses 1 through 17. In verse 18, he says, he, he hooks this up to that group. In the first sentence, he uses day to hook, right? Now, he used the word now. Then what he did in the second, and he, 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 that's verse 18. Then he comes along, and now he started. He started a f as the now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. See, see, look at verse eighteen. The first sentence. See that was as follows. Are you with me? What we have now, the birth. We have the birth. Now the birth. Now the birth was as follows. No. On the why is the sentence the same thing? What? On the why, that's what Christ says. On the what? Why, W-I-S-E. Right. Instead of as follows, it's got... Uh, Otherwise. Not, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on, on this why thing. Oh, yeah. It, it's King James stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But this is what this means. What it li literally, that's a demonstrative oh, pronoun, a, do, a demonstrative adverb. It's a demonstrative adverb, uh, and it means in the following manner. Okay. This is what the uh, hutas means in the following manner or in this way. And so what he does with this is he now starts a series off from the now that fulfills one. And now starts a trailer hitch. We're going we're gonna to piggyback all the way down. Off from the, as follows. Okay? So this one here kind of hooks up to this one. And then we start piggybacking all the way down about the birth of Christ. Are you with me? And so each of these, these are all days, every one of them. Now, remember, remember how I, I hooked them with you. You know, verse 22 and 23, 24 and 25, pay attention to that. But they all are off from now. I mean, you, you could say in the true manner of what, what Matthew is writing, they could all be the now. Now, here's how the now works. Now the birth of Christ. And so here, here's how the now works. That, that They used it in different ways in the English. But they're linked. Uh, what I want you to see, they're linked. They're piggybacked all the way down. Every, every, and, and these are specific, these are specific points. Right? So this one hooked up one, one big point. All of that, all verses 1 through 17 are fulfilled at the birth of Jesus Christ. Right? Why? Well, I'm not looking for <laughs> they were. I mean, I'm not looking for any confirmation on that idea. But but they were, see. Now the birth of Christ. All of that is looking for the, each each generation get look for the eminence of the first coming of Christ. Now they didn't they didn't know it was first coming, because they only talked about the coming of Christ. Now what we're in, once the birth comes, now we're looking at the birth as it takes now what I know you're not gonna do this. Only guys like me do this. But you see, now that I know that, what do you think I'm going to look for as I go through the book of Matthew? I'm going to look for markers. He gave me, see, he did the, 
The writer of Genesis did the same thing. They did it too uh, in the Hebrew. The Hebrew does it too. Listen, you ever wrote a paper? You ever had to write a theme paper or something like that, right? Or a paper on anything? We, you do the same thing. You have an introduction and then your points, your introduction is going to tell you why you're doing what you're doing and then you tell them why you're doing it. At the end, you make a conclusion why you thought this was important, right? You do the same thing. And, and if, you, if, you, if, you, if you can't take your paper and you have to do it, you make sure your points are in some system that you can remember them, right? If you don't, right? Was I the only guy who did that? Uh, I still do it. And when I went in the pastorate, they didn't think you were filled with the Holy Spirit if you, if you, if you taught from your notes. Yeah. How crazy was that? Uh, that's maybe why we got into 20-minute sermons or something. I don't know. I don't know. But, but anyhow, uh, th so what they do is each, each of these days gives you a, uh, a specific point on the importance of the birth of Christ, dealing with the birth of Christ, act, dealing with the actual birth story, the actual birth story. But it's also going to be important. That principle that's up there is going to be important throughout the whole book. See, you see how Matthew's, I mean, he's, you can see by the way he opens his book how he's going to write. Do you, do you not see that? When you see it, it makes the book of Matthew a lot more important to you. So here's what I did. I, I wrote down some of the important points as I saw them. You might see them different, and that's your privilege. But in verse, for, in verse 18, I saw a spiritual pregnancy. I put, I put, I tried to do S and P words. A spiritual pregnancy of Mary. That's, that was an idea. In verse 19, a spiritual problem. Her pregnancy became a spiritual problem to Joseph. In verse 20, God intervenes in their life to try to clean up the mess they're about to get into with a spiritual promise to Joseph of, Mary, of marriage to Mary. In 21, I saw a spiritual promise to Joseph about her, her child that would be a son and a savior. In verse 22 and 23, I saw uh, a spiritual prophecy of Isaiah 7, 14 given to Joseph and the identity of Isaiah to this son, Emmanuel, God with us. In verse 24 and 25, I saw a spiritual performance of Joseph. This is what the word of God, when it comes to you, no matter who teaches it, it's come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear and let him believe. And when he hears and believes, that's only one half of the faith cycle. The other half is performance. The first half is the promises. The second half is the performance, right, of the faith cycle. And, and we see this. Listen, to, look. I wrote these down in verse 24, 25, and I want, to, I want you to see what God wants to see in your life. What, what, what God saw Joseph did, this is what God would stand up and applaud. What, what he saw Joseph do after, now he was in the, he was in the pain of his life when this, when this began. He thinks Mary's been pregnant by somebody else. And what a mess. And so he's trying to figure out how to deal with it with some kind of honor. And God, in, in the mess of that, because he was going in the wrong direction, he, he, he was going in the wrong direction without intentions of doing that. He wasn't like Jonah who knew what God wanted him to do, knew it all out straight up and straight down, then went and said, nah, I ain't doing it. I mean, Joseph is struggling with real problems and real issues, trying to find biblical answers. And God, listen to me, here's this part of your story. He will, all, he will always intervene on your behalf. He will send a message to you by someone, by hook, cook, or, you know, my, hook, cook. Hook, cook. Hook. Yeah, I don't know. I had it in a moment, and then it just slid away. <laughs> Uh, hook or crook? 
He'll get it to you is my point. Listen, you know why? Listen to me. And if you learn nothing else from my Christmas story this year, because God is faithful. God is faithful to his plan that you're involved in. He's faithful to his word, which you're involved in. And when you struggle with it, when you can't seem to get a, a handle on it, he will, he will always step into your life in some way with the message of how to do it. He will always do that. And you need, to, you need to be aware of that. And when he does that, you need to be all full of happiness because God ain't going to let you sink. Listen, first, you ought to write this down. First Corinthians 10, 13, unless you know it. He will never put you in a situation that he hasn't prepared you to be able to walk it out through faith. And when you struggle with that faith system, he will step into that and make a way for you to escape, to uh, make you a way to work through it. He will do that. You, you've got to understand God is faithful. And don't give up the ship. If you walk it out, he'll walk with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And so this is, this is, you know, this is really important. Well, so it, we're talking about watch, watch his performance. This is the last faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. It must be cycled in the, into performance. Listen to his performance. Verse 24, 25. I wrote these down. I, I'm just going to read out of the Bible. You pay attention to the key things that Joseph did. Joseph arose from his sleep because this is where the revelation was given to him. Joseph, he's under old covenant rules. Joseph arose from his sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her, Mary, as his wife and kept her a virgin until she gave birth to her son, gave birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. I mean, all of that's performance. You see, you can't get to performance. Listen, the it's performance of the word of God. It's the promise of the word of God that I believe in and the performance. Romans, you ought to write this down, Romans 4.21, and you ought to pound that in your soul till you get it. Yeah, you, you need to get that. Not just the idea of it, you need to get the scripture of it. That what God has promised, he is able, not only able, but willing to perform it in your life. The promise he's given to you, he is able to perform it. See, that's faith cycle, the promise of God to the performance of God. Not only will he give it to you, he'll see that it's delivered on time, on place, on cue. So, I mean, I love this story. I mean, you see this guy walk out of a mess, walked right out of a mess with his head held high doing the thing. He did the right thing the right way, right? I mean, he did it. I mean, he did it. And, 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 and that's for all of us. I mean, his life was a mess when this story started. He heard the truth of the word of God. He believed the truth of the word of God. And then he walked it out his life. He walked by faith. Listen, when this story starts, he's walking by sight, not by faith. He's struggling with the faith side of it. How do I get all this put together? I can't get it together in my head. And, and God said, look, that, that's, look, that's, He's a good broker of the word of God. Let's step in there and intervene. And he does. And the next day, he, once he gets that clear in his head, once he gets that doctrinal idea right, he's, on, he's back on line. And he, now he's walking by faith, not by sight. Before, he was struggling with that. He, he was struggling with walking by sight, walking by faith. He couldn't get clarity. Listen, that's, that's an okay struggle. God will intervene. He'll bring somebody to your life with a message that will just clear it up. Hopefully, that's one of us to somebody else. Hopefully, that's us. So, let's talk about before they came together. <coughs> now, here's my first point. What I'm going to do with the second sentence in verse 18, I'm going to break it down in three parts because it's intended to be understood. The way it's laid out in the Greek language it is important to separate these three, three things. And I'm going to tell you why. Because, and I've done that. I, and I put a title with them so I could refer you back to it. I put the promise, premarital high drama, premarital high drama, and pregnancy. Okay? 
Now, this sentence, sentence opens with, with something without this. Now, remember this. This is the story side of the birth. This is the Joseph story side, Matthew. Luke is Mary's side, right? All right. But here's what's important. When this opens, look who the subject is and look who the object is. Now, watch this. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, Mary's the subject. This is, this is Joseph's story, and it begins with Mary, who became a big problem in Joseph's life. And it says when his mother, this is looking back at history, when his mother Mary, Mary had been betrothed. See, we're looking down history lane. See, this is that day right here, and I said it, it, it would be wise to keep that in the now when they did. Because that's the trailer hitch about the birth, what happened here. And he took you back to history when Mary, see, it refers to when Mary, his mother, well, he wasn't, he, she wasn't even married at that point. She was engaged to be married in our society. Do you understand that? How this is introduced is really important. When his mother Mary, because the book of Matthew is about the story of the birth of Christ that went on. Uh, to the cross and raised from the dead. When his mother Mary had been betrothed, heir, now pay attention, heiress passive participle to Joseph. Okay? And remember, this is really the Joseph side of the story, and it is, because was this a problem? When he, when Jesus might say, listen, when Joseph, my father, Joseph, when when they were engaged, oh, my goodness, what a mess. All right. So that's important that we separate that and we understand that. Mary, Mary leads this off. Mary leads this off. And the reason is that the next part of this, before they came together, is premarital high, high drama. This is where the high drama enters in. The word before is interesting because it's made up of two things, the word before that you can't see. It is the adverb plus a disjunctive conjunction. It's a little dinky thing in the Greek, and all you see is that. That's all you see. And boy, you better not miss that. And I'll tell you, some, some have missed that, and I'll tell you how they missed it. See how that's up there? See that little mark right there? If you turn, if you don't look at that right and that little mark goes the other way, that's not a disjunct conjunction. That's, that's a definite article. That's hey. That little, that little booger right there is pretty important. Because that mark goes that way. It don't go that way. And that's a big difference. <laughs> At one little breathing mark, that's called a breather. That little breather mark right there is really important in this story. <laughs> Who would have thought? That little dinky thing up there that's pretty hard to see you got to have eyes so or magnifying glass so the word before is really important it's a historical identity they were engaged they were engaged they were betrothed you know what betrothed means it's more than engaged Betrothed means that they have, in their, in their society, of the Jewish society, two families, two families. I know I told two, two mamas and dads, two families. I mean, we could have uncles and aunts. We could have a hundred on each side. Two 
families, brothers, sisters, in-laws, outlaws, right? <laughs> when it says they're betrothed, both of these families have come together. They have all signed off on this marriage, and this thing is locked publicly. You understand? This is a, I mean, this is, I, the closest we could get to that is when you send your, your invitations out to your marriage. What, what, what did they, is that what they call that? The invitations to be married? And, and they all go out, the place, the date, the time, all that. You can still back out and not be a big deal. You, there is no backing out. The, o- the only way out of that once, once you're betrothed is divorce or death. There's no out. Hmm? In the eyes, in the eyes, they are. All right, but they're not. But they they are committed publicly in marriage, so the only way out is divorce or death. A legal, yes. A custom, a custom legal document so betrothed you know listen i've had couples sent their invitations out came in and said ron and i was guided to performing it saying look we got to talk and when we got through talking they get married they had sent all those out gifts have come in you're right a lot of pressure on you to back out of that deal There's no backing out of that deal. You had to go legally out. And so listen, when Joseph, in a moment, listen, before they came together, now this is interesting. You see the word autos, they, the word autos? Listen to me. It's accusative. Used as a subject. See, see the, the word they is the subject, isn't it? Please tell me you see that. That's the subject. Yeah. That's a subject. Oh. If it's a subject, it should be in the nominative case. It is not in the nominative case, not in the Greek nor in the Bible. It's accusative. Accusative is a direct object. It's an object. It's not a subject. Matthew did that intentionally. Why? Why? How can you possibly use an accusative as a subject? I mean, it breaks every, it breaks every grammatical rule. It does in the English. The question is, how can you do that? There was a way to use an accusative in what's called General reference. This is rare. And when it's done, it's done for great emphasis. Wouldn't that be obvious? It is pretty obvious to me. And in the Greek language, they have room for such an act. And I wrote it on your paper. It's called general reference to what? Yes, and that's what's important to the subject. What's important to this is why I've separated these. That's very important because it's a general reference to the betrothed. About betrothed. Because in this betrothed, Joseph feels that he's been betrayed. And before they, Mary and Joseph, the only two people who got here, before they came together sexually, she was found to be with child. And 
listen, it affected their betrothed. The whole deal. It betrayed the whole deal. So when you want to be sure that nobody misses a big point, you throw it into an accusative, a general reference that forces you back to what is the subject. What is the subject is Mary's betrothed to Joseph. Agreed? Oh, please. I suppose I should stop and thank you because you pay me to stay home and not go out and work and pay my way so I can do what I want to do my, in my life. You pay me to find this stuff. And I thank you for that. There's no way I could work a full-time job and do this for you. Especially with a disabled wife. There's no way I could do that. But because you are so gracious to me, I am dedicated to serve you well. I am dedicated to serve you well. Now, of course, I do that for the Lord. But you are who the Lord has sent me. And so I tell you this because that is so out of the norm. Now, here's what most lazy preachers would say. It's just a typo somewhere. Oh, it's just manuscript problems and yeah, 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 yeah. And they miss his point. Before they came together. Whew, there's a whole lot of information there in it. Before they came together. Came together. Is a, it has the preposition front out of it. That's where you get together. Came together. Erkomai is the word came. And then together is the word soon. Soon erkomai. Now watch this. It's an aorist infinitive. It's an aorist infinitive. Here's what you got to know. An infinitive is a verbal noun. It's a verbal noun. In other words, it acts, it it, it, dis, it works with the verb and it works with the noun. An infinitive is not a verb and it's not a noun. It's a verbal noun. And so when you have it, when you have an aorist infinitive, it is talking about, it's dressing up the noun and the verb and giving you facts. An aorist infinitive, because it's an aorist, an aorist infinitive pushes you that you can take this to the bank, we would say. This is a fact. If it's an event, if it's a person, I don't care what it's talking about. When it's an aorist infinitive, you can take it to the bank. This is a fact. You can hang your hat on it. You know all these, all these examples that people talk about something? This is concrete evidence business. So, it dresses up the verb, they came together, and it dresses up the noun, they. Now, we've talked about the they, right? It's a verbal noun. An infinitive is a verbal noun. When it's aorist infinitive, watch out, because it's pushing a fact, something you can hang your doctrinal hat on. It's going to be an important issue for your walk of faith. Okay. And what, are, what is this? It is a fact about the doctrine of, of abstinence of premarital sex. Is that what they're saying? Of course it is. Before they came together sexually, you see that? That's what they're talking about. What, what were they? They were betrothed. We call it engaged, but it's a bigger picture than that. See, all of that, he's setting up a high drama thing here 
of this story, how Joseph, here's Mary and here's Joseph, and they're, and they're in a, that sounded like my phone, didn't it? My phone on? Oh, okay. I was like, well, mine could be on. I don't know. If it's mine, I better answer it because it could be mama. Now, so we've got, they've got the promise. They, they've, they've promised each other that they would marry marry each other. They're committed to the families. That's the promise. They are, they are promised each other, right? They are promised to each other. And then, and they, they, they're, they have, they have, they have done their, listen, they have walked righteously in their relationship, in their courtship. They have not allowed sex to get involved in it, right? They've, they've stayed, they've stayed, uh, they've stayed in, listen. Well, yeah. All a guy has to do is say to a girl, let's go steady. That's number one, if he's in high school. If he's out of high school, all he has to do is say, let's get engaged. If he couldn't get to first base beforehand, now he can get to first base. That's what he thinks. That's what all his friends think. And, and that really is how the game is played out there. That's stupid for Christians. And I don't care what age you are. I don't care if you're 80. My aunt is shocked. I have an aunt now in the retirement home. She is shocked how much premarital sex goes, premarital sex goes on in a nursing home. She is shocked. I said, well, you can do something about it. God didn't send you there to, to be a critic of it, right? Then, or to engage in it, but anyhow. So here's what he finds in this high drama moment. He finds that she's pregnant. She, Mary, she was found, Mary, who he's betrayed to, but, uh, betrothed to, she was found, watch this now, air is passive indicative, which is a main verb. You always pay attention to a main verb. It's the only main verb we have. She was found to be, in this sentence, she was found to be, which is the word hat. This is not, this is not I me. See, you would normally think the word is or be would be I me, an absolute status quo verb of existence. It's not this. This is the word to have, to hold. It's the word echo. This is, this is not to be. This is, she has. This is, she, she, it, it, it's a, a word not of, ex of one's existence or something that's in existence, but something that has just happened that, that, that you're, you're in possession of. It's in your pocket book. I don't know how it got there. I left for $5. I came home with 1000 I don't know. That's Mary. Except Mary knows why the $1,000 is in her pocket or why the baby's in her womb. Right? Okay. But see, he doesn't know how was it possible you left with five dollars and came back with a thousand? How was that possible? Well, it was a miracle. The five dollars had babies. Okay. It's it's kind of hard for him to wrap his brain around this. She has been off for three months with Elizabeth who when she went was in her sixth month and was struggling apparently and went to aid her in her old age having a baby and stayed there till the birth and came home. That's in the story of Luke. Now, what we have is a participle. We have a present active participle. A participle is a verbal adjective. It's used as a, ver as a verbal adjective. A participle is not, it's not a verb. It's a verbal adjective. It's not a verb. And a participle and infinitive is not a verb. They're used in the most unique ways 
they're, they, the participle dresses up as a, it dress up the adjective, dresses up the subject, and dresses up the verb. Okay? And it, 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 it dresses them up. So, she was found, heiress passive indicative, to be in possession of, <laughs> with child. It doesn't say that. What it actually says in the Greek language, it has the word in plus the locative, wrote on your paper, in plus the locative of sphere. And the worm, word is not child, the word is womb. It's gaster, G-A-S-T-E-R. It's a locative singular feminine and it's a reference to being pregnant, pregnant with child. And so the writers, instead of laying it out, they just said she was with child. But it means that there is a, how old? How old is the child in her womb? Three months, right? Three months. She's in first try. try. And so she's pregnant. She, she might be showing a little. I don't know. I don't know. She could be, right? She could be. Got a, got a nurse in here? Could be. Maybe. Depends on her and the size of the baby and all that. Could be. But. Yeah, probably not. So, so, so how, so how did Joseph, how, how was it, how was it discovered? The word found means to discover. How was it discovered? Hmm? She, she probably told him. Right? She probably told him. I mean, she's probably having maybe she, uh, still morning sickness or something, maybe. I don't know, after three months. Some maybe. I don't know. Some people have it. Some don't. This is the first baby. All things kind. Of, but I don't know. She was found. She was found out. Joseph found out. Joseph, she was found out that there was a baby, three months old fetus. She was pregnant, and it wasn't his. It wasn't me. <laughs> right? It wasn't me. And it happened while she was away. For him, in his eyes, but she was found to be three months pregnant. Now, whether or not the mother discovered it, whether she talked to her mother, I don't know, but he found out more than likely from Mary at some point, they've got to sit down and have a talk. And wh however that, whether it came through the family or whether it came from Joseph or Mary or however it came, she was found out. And here's what, listen, she was found to be in possession or to be the possessor of, to have hold, to be in possession of a child in her womb, three months, by the Holy Spirit. Now watch out. There's no definite article with the Holy Spirit. Now there ought to be, don't you think? If identifying the person, if you're going to identify the person, you put a definite article with it. But if you're not willing, if, you're, if you don't want to identify the person and you want to identify the work of the person, you leave off the definite article. And what you have by leaving the definite article off with the word by, by the, which is ek plus the ablative of source, it's ek plus the ablative of source, the word by is ek plus the ablative of source by the creative work. The creative work, the same work that the Holy Spirit did in the creation of the universe, which was bara, the ability to create something out of nothing except the word of God, bara. This Holy Spirit has just done in the womb of Mary. Now, don't miss what was discovered where you're going to miss the high drama on the backside. The high drama on the front side, oh, my goodness, my, my fiancé is three months pregnant. The high drama on the backside 
listen to me, she was found to be in possession in her womb of a child by the creative, miraculous creative, the miraculous creative work of the Holy Spirit. That's what, listen to me, now you're missing it. What was, what was really discovered is not just that she was pregnant, but that the, she was pregnant by the creative work of the Holy Spirit. Do you see that? And, and listen, it was confirmed to Joseph by a, a communicating angel, a messenger angel, and Joseph believed it. Just like you said in here. No different. Listen to me. The power to your life is always in the word of God because God does what he says. No different. No matter what the word of God says. Don't matter what it is. Doesn't matter what it is. That same Holy Spirit that did this work in her lives inside us to do a miraculous work through our life, right? 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Listen, we ought to believe that. We ought to believe that as much as Joseph believed it about Mary and Mary believed it about God. We ought to believe that much. What's wrong with us? That we don't think the word of God has that kind of power through our faith to do impossible things. Listen, what's impossible with men is what? Possible with God. See, faith makes us understand that. Faith is what walks it out in our life as absolute truth. The aorist, the aorist infinitive of our life. The facts. See the main verb, found? Gosh, I, 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 <laughs> I'm through with my study. I'm through. Am I through? I got to be. Is it 7.30? I got three minutes. Well, I just write it. Apparently, I don't teach it as well as I write it. But here, look at the main verb. The main verb of this sentence is the word found. It's an aorist passive indicative. Remember last night we said that, that that passive voice is the voice of receiving. Mary received the creative work of the Holy Spirit and conception was done by God with her egg through the cre miraculous creative work of the Holy Spirit. And you know what the aorist infinitive tells you? That's a what? A fact. How many times did I tell you that? At least five. I told you the aorist infinitive, because it's aorist infinitive, it refers to a fact. Okay. Eh? Thank you for writing it down. The made verb, aorist passive indicative, now becomes port important to two participles. I look up in the prom the promised. See that participle up there? It's an aorist passive participle. Do you see that? Aorist, that A is aorist, P is passive, and the PTC, that's participle. That main verb, active, passive, indicative, there is, a, there is a, a formula in the Greek language that says the action of, the, of, the main, the, uh, of a, action of an aorist participle precedes the action of a main verb. You have that? When, the, when they all are identical, when the aorist passive participle and the aorist passive indicative are identified equally, both aorist, both passive, a participle connected to an infinitive. A participle is, a, is, an, is a, uh, an adjective, a, a verbal adjective, dressing up those two things, and the inf indicative is, a, is the mood of reality, a mood of reality, the reality of it. And so a participle is going to paint a picture, and the, and the indicative 
is going to show you the whole picture, is going to give you the, all the scenery involved in it. Okay? So here's what it, here, here's what it says. I mean, remember, the action of the heirs participle precedes the action of the main verb. So here they're betrothed, and she's found to be with child. They're linked. But listen, the great news for Joseph and, and Mary both, but especially for Joseph tonight, wasn't that she was just pregnant, which shattered his world, but that she was pregnant by the Holy Spirit, which brought his life back into some norm and standard. You understand that? That was Joseph's side of the heiress participle working with the heiress indicative. He got back some reality. It was a nightmare. He woke up. He was in a nightmare and woke up with some joy. I mean, he was in a nightmare of a dream. But that was reality in his life. Now, the other, now watch this now. I've got another participle. Look, and she was found to have, notice this now. It's a present active participle. It's not an aorist. Is not an aorist. That present is now connecting the aorist participle and the aorist indicative to an event that's followed. Well, they, they were betrothed. She was discovered to have in her possession in her womb a three-month-old child. which was by the, which was there because of the source of which was there was the creative miraculous work of the holy spirit the present tense now connects that up with that to mean that that became the solid foundation of his doctrine to walk this out in his life now i didn't get to point 2 and 3 today because i'm through we'll come back to that subject because I'm into this verses 25 if I ever get through them. So what can we walk away with? Listen. The faith cycle. Because the faith cycle works not because of our character and not because of our struggles. It works because God is faithful. If you learn nothing else from this Christmas series, God is faithful. God is faithful to do what he has promised. He will do what he's promised. And listen, in the life of Joseph, he is the only one that could have bailed him out. And in your life, there will be days when the only one that can bail you out, and the only one that should bail you out, and the only one you want to bail you out is God and God alone. And the way you get that is you walk it out by faith, not by sight. Father, we're thankful tonight for these that have come our way by automobile and internet. We pray the Holy Spirit would minister the truth of our lesson tonight as we've looked at a lot of technical stuff in the Greek language because Matthew wrote it that way. It's very difficult to understand it in the English, and so we thank you for the dynamics of the language in which it was written to bring us the whole story and the truth and nothing but the truth. So help us. So help us, God, with truth. We are people who struggle with absolute truths. We question everything about it. May we start believing what we hear as we examine it and understand it and believe it and then walk it out like Joseph. He walked it out in his life. No more doubting, trusting God to do what God said he would do and how faithful you are, Father, how faithful you are. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.